Welcome, everybody. Uh, Mark Bolas is someone who, no doubt, many of you are uh, already aware of and, and uh, familiar with. Mark has, has worked for the last 20 years in virtual reality. He's an innovator uh, and an educator. He's a technologist and an artist. He's contributed to the field of virtual reality uh, with innovations such as uh, the boom display, the pinch gloves, um, the wide five, uh, 150 degree head mounted display, um, 360 degree light field display, uh, and light stage six, work on light stage six. Uh, these are innovations to, to virtual reality that uh, literally change the way people relate to virtual worlds. Everybody? Go now, Mama. <laughs> I can't do better than that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna show some really old worlds at first. They're still true. So it's really cool. You put on the head mount. You see the room you're in, but the whole room becomes virtual. And I did that. I remember telling myself, I'm gonna spend an hour a day in here, every day, or something like that. I think I gave myself this challenge. Well, after about 15 minutes, you've seen enough of the virtual room. And your virtual hand, that's pretty cool. You look at it, you move it around, and that's really neat, your body. And then pretty soon you're like, okay, what do I do here? And, you know, it's kind of neat, but I'm done. And I think I forced myself for 45 minutes the first one. I had to do it, and it was pretty boring. So the first thing I did was I made this figure eight racetrack and put people in it, and you would fly by one in your hand. And I felt I could really suck people in, and they'd really get lost in the world for a couple reasons. One was, I had to give them a challenge. So I would tell them the last person made it around this track in a minute. The minute you did that, half of them wanted to beat the time. Right? The other one was, um, the figure eight was a really fortuitous shape because it's like pin the tail on the donkey. When they fly around the figure eight, they do this. And you're basically spinning them around, but the cables don't get all wrapped up because it's figure eight. And it forces them to lose the real room around them. And it seemed to work pretty well. I find being immersed really exciting because you get to create, you get to synthesize, you get to, to compose these worlds that excite somebody's perceptual system. Our bodies are just these amazing perceptual things that we get to experience the world in. And what I find particularly fun is being able to experience more than the world and being able to create more than the world. But what I also found was that you can't try to put them there because it's never exact, right? It's always a little different. So if you allow your imagery to get more abstract, if you allow your content to become more abstract, you can pull them even further into being immersed. And some of the examples I showed did that, which was, okay, flying like a bird is an exact representation. So it doesn't work. Flying like this is an abstract representation, but it took the little piece that felt good about flying like a bird and it used it. Any virtual world at this point is gonna be somewhat abstracted and whether we read it as representational or as a good representation of the world has much more to do with our expectations, our perceptions, than it does with whether it actually resembles the real world any more than anything. Right? In some ways, we still have this idea that we have to kind of come up with a simulation that's going to be, that's going to simulate the world at incredible resolution, right? And, you know, when in fact we don't, we, we have to figure out a way to build something that's tailor made to our perceptual apparatus so that the parts that matter. You know, so, I mean, you know, upping the ante of a whole world isn't really the point. It's upping the ante of the one little part of that world that we're looking at at that microsecond. And somehow I think the aesthetics of it are all bound up in that as well. It's our job to find the nuggets. And you do that by do being really sensitive while you're doing all these experiments. And I mean sensitive in a, in a really strange way, and I've gotten better at it as I've gotten older, but like feeling your hormones where you just realize, oh, Oh, I'm getting, ah, that's, that's kind of getting to me. Then, then you've got something when you can feel that. Okay, so I call that finding nuggets in the medium. And um, being hypersensitive is how you do it, and just trying is how you do it. And lo and behold, that's the basis of the critique method, right? Somebody puts something out there, and you see how you react to it. You can react to it emotionally, you can react to it intellectually, you can even react to it physically. But you have to, you have to record your own reactions and then figure out why they happen. This notion of creating this vocabulary similar to the one that Bruce Block has established for visual storytelling. Um, 
which I think is a really interesting project. But I would argue that even though you present Bruce Bloch's um, theory as vocabulary, that actually if you look at what Bruce is talking about, it's a set of techniques. It's not actually a vocabulary where there are signifiers. So blue, in this case, in the scene that you showed us, means something. But in another setting, it means something else. It's not a vocabulary in the sense that there are, that these techniques always mean the same thing, right? So I guess one thing that I would caution in this project that you're proposing, which I, I think is a really interesting and valid one, is A, to not think of it as a vocabulary, but, it, but actually to, to think of it as a, a series of techniques. It's a long topic, how you deconstruct, deconstruct experience design. Because you need the context, you need everything to get you there where blue does mean this. And I don't know how to parse out these single little narrow things without going so far that you get the really mind-numbingly boring psychophysical tests of, okay, people can be scared of a drop-off. And that test took probably over a year to do. So it's a real challenge for me right now how to, how to do what you're talking about and still have fun doing it and still create complete works. Our theme right now at the ICT lab is we want to do anything that creates an extreme moment of engagement. And then we will study that individual extreme moment of engagement.